Hey guys, this is the Yo Cube, and I'm sure that all of you, uh, all of you know what this cube is. But just in case that someone doesn't know, uh, this cube is uh, the the cube, the favorite cube of choice of the popular cubing YouTuber Cubehead. And so basically, this is his favorite cube with his favorite setup, and that will create his personal favorite cube. And uh, he sold this on a cubicle, and it got so many positive reviews, like. I am looking at the cubicle right now, and there are currently 178 reviews, and like almost all of them are five star reviews, and that's just crazy. Like, I mean, obviously this cube was so good; everyone was praising about it. Everyone saying that this setup was so soft, so smooth. The cube works so, so great. Um, you know, and I was really in interested by it, and because I love Cupin as a cubing YouTuber, I bought the cube, and when I first turned it. I was really disappointed. Like, when I first turned the cube, I really, really did not like it. And in this video, I'll show, I'll tell you why and how I fixed those problems. Now, uh, don't hate me for this. I'm, I'm not like, uh, it's, it's not against Cubehead personally. Like, I love Cubehead as a, as a YouTuber. It's just that, you know, my tastes for a good cube are maybe uh, aren't like maybe aren't coinciding with his i don't know if that made sense but yeah it's just my personal preference on like a cube of choice so yeah and then before i get into any criticisms uh, criticisms i'm just saying that if you're a beginner and you got this cube this would be a totally usable cube i think like if you're a beginner or like intermediate, you wouldn't actually mind this cube. Because I would say that this cube is pretty usable. I mean, yeah, I mean, when, when you're getting to sub 10, you know, sub 8, sub 9, you need to fine tune your cube a lot to your turning style. But before that, uh, you know, any cube, you know, usually works fine as long as, as it's, mag it's magnetic, it turns fine. And that's, and, that, and that's it. So I would say this cube is a pretty nice choice if you're... Um, you know, averaging, I don't know, sub 30 or sub 20, it's still a pretty good cube. And the reason I'm so disappointed at this, because, you know, this is Cubicle Premium, and I love Cubicle Premium. Like, literally all of, top five of my favorite cubes, they're all right here, are Cubicle Premium cubes. This is the uh, Angstrom Worm, Celeritas Worm, Mystic R3N, Angstrom Volcali, and Max Ganesex. Like, all of the all of my top five favorite cubes are cubicle premium cubes, and there's a reason why. Like their premium setups are so astoundingly good, uh, and yeah, I just expected a lot from this cube, and this cube did not live up to the expectation of cubicle premium. That's why I was so you know harsh about it. But I would say you know any other cube or you know maybe if you're averaging sub twenty, this cube would be totally fine. Okay, enough of that. Let's just get straight into the cube. <clears throat> so. My main criticism about this cube is that it's too slow. Now, a lot of people might say, well, obviously it's slow because there's a lot of moves in them, right? You gotta break them in. And I did. I did a hundred of souls on this cube. And it did not break in. Like, it's still pretty slow. I mean, out of the box, it was so slow. And after breaking it, it only got slightly faster, but it was slow. Like, it was still pretty slow. Now, uh, the thing with being slow is, I don't think being slow is a terrible thing. Like, a cube being slow is not a terrible thing for me. Because I think there are three types of slow, and I'll explain that right here. The first type of slow is a stable, you know, controllable type of slow. And that I'll bring up the uh, Volk Elite, especially the Angstrom Volk Elite. This one's especially controllable by the Cubicle Premium Service. Um, Like, this cube is slow. It's no means spammable for, like like 10 or 12 TPS, but this cube, you know, it's really, really stable. Um, it's a rock solid puzzle. I mean, like you can be like, for example, if I'm turning my Angstrom worm, I lock up a lot because you know, it's a bit flimsy sometimes. I'm not, even I'm not controlling my turning, but when I switch back to this cube, I barely get those overshooting, you know, that those issues. So this is a t stable type of slow and that's good, right? You need to have control of your cube when you're solving. Another type of slow is a, uh, you know, smooth type of slow. And this, I bring up uh, the Mystic R3M and this uh, R3M 2020 that I lubed with Angstrom lubes. These cubes are pretty slow, but um, they are also so smooth and so enjoyable to turn. And you can actually smooth down your, like, slow down your turning and make your solve actually fluent and smooth. And you can actually look ahead into, 
you know, look ahead deeper into the soul while you're, while you're solving. I think that's like really important. And having a smoothly slow cube, I think is also not a bad thing because the feeling is enjoyable. And you, you know, sometimes you just need to make your souls fluent. But this cube is a third type of slow. And I believe that this slow is a bad type of slow. It's a sluggish type of slow. Like when I'm turning this cube, I feel like the, the lubes and the magnets, which I'll talk about later, are dragging me down, like are making my terms harder. I need to put more effort into turning right now. And that's like not a good thing because like if I'm practicing for long sessions with this cube, I'm naturally gonna get tired, right? And I just cannot, you know, turn fast on this cube, which I thought was really bad. This is a sluggish type of slow. Like, um, it's not so smooth, which I'll talk about later because of the magnets, and it's not stable either. So it's just a bad type of slow. Now, I think this is because of the lubes, because if you don't know, um, I'm going on to cubicle right, the cubicle right now. This cube is lubed with weight five, angstrom, dignitas, mystic, and DNM. Now, I think cube head might have gone a little too crazy with the dignitas. I mean, like I have lubed and relubed uh, angstrom setups before, and I know for a fact that when you put too much dignitas or gravitas in a cube, it gets so slow, so slow that you need like a huge amount of DNM to compensate. So I think cube head went too crazy with the dignitas in this cube. So I don't think this loop setup is ideal. I mean, I I do think this would work out well if he uh, didn't put so much dignitas in this because I think this loop setup is pretty enjoyable outside of the fact that, you know, it's slow. So another issue I have with this is the magnets. So out of default, sorry, uh, at a default, I think Cube had set this these magnets to one, which is the strongest setting, and that, to me, was really a bad choice because already you're having a slow cube, and then you're just making strong magnets to drag it down even more, which I think is like really really bad, and that's the reason why it's isn't a smooth type of slow because magnets are getting in the way of you making a turn and. You know, it's so effortful. You need so much effort to make a turn, actually. So those were the two issues I have with this yoke cube. And so I fixed, I tried to fix it, and I did. Uh, remember I say, you know, the clue, the cube being so sluggishly slow? Well, I'll just put a lot of DNM, right? I mean, when you have a lot of gravitas, or like dignitas in the cube, you just need to, you know, go with DNM. DNM is always great. Uh, for making your cubes fast and, uh, you know, getting the speed to a perfect, uh, a perfect speed. I have three bottles of DNM for some reason and I enjoy using them all. And I use a lot on this cube to finally compensate for the insane amount of gravitas. And I think that fixes the loop setup pretty well. And also, the magnets I tried to change. But here's another uh, criticism I have of this cube, and it's the base cube, it's not cube head's fault. It's that Moyu gave you these like these tools to adjust the magnet system, and at first I thought you know this was great because this is Moyu's first ever you know magnet adjusting system, but it turns out why did they give you four? And that is because um, this tool is so fragile, like it's so brittle, it breaks really really easily. And why did they give you four? Well, if you break one, then you can use the other three. Which is just, like, what? Why don't you just make one tool better instead of, like, giving me four, like, giving me three replacements? suits? I don't know if you can see it on this camera, but these tools are pretty damaged. Like, especially this one. I mean, look at that. You can barely adjust the magnets with this cube, uh, with these tools. And so, uh, I actually resorted to another tool I had from another cube. I think it's a uh, Diane Tangent V2, I think. I see a tool from that view. Actually, let me find it real quick. Here. Um, I used this flathead screwdriver to adjust the uh, magnets. And this is from another cube. Like, think about how crazy this is. Like, this is so much easier than these tools. And this is from a totally different cube. Like, what? Mo, you, uh, you know, keep making your magnet system better. But I just has all these magnets to three with great difficulty. Um, and yeah, finally, I got this magnet strength to be not overpowering strong. 
And now I actually enjoy this Yoshi. So yeah, that was a pretty long ramble video. I don't normally make videos like this. Um, I barely talk about cubes and I just, you know, make about, I make videos about reconstructions. I think this one was fun. Um, I don't know if you watched it at the end. If you did, thank you so much. You know, please like and subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.